Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Two Gay Mets. It's Matt Steele. And it's Matt Palmer. And Matt Palmer and I, you know, we're not the smoothest and suavest of individuals. Well, he's not. Uh, <laughs> you're not the coolest either. I'm kind of super cool. Yeah, so cool. <laughs> a guy ran flawless. Hey! You bought me the shirt. I did. <laughs> we have a lot of embarrassing moments, and mm. we figured it'd be fun to share them with you. But we also thought we, made, we could make it into a little game. Of course, we love a game. We love a game. <laughs> he loves a game. We each have five stories yes. each of embarrassing moments from our lives. Yes. And we're each going to rank each other's embarrassing stories, like on a scale of one to ten. Yeah. Ten being the most embarrassing. Ten being the most, ten embarrassing. most embarrassing. One being not embarrassing at all. <laughs> um, and we're going to give each other a score, and whoever has the most points at the end officially yes. has the more embarrassing life. <laughs> yes. Who's going first, you or me? I'll go. You've been talking for a while. Okay. <laughs> the first is from high school. Okay. And I think I was in like 10th grade or something, and I was cast as like the cop in Arsenic and Old Lace. A cop. <laughs> you don't think I could be a cop? So at the end of the first act and into the beginning, the cop has its big scene. There was like a big speech monologue situation that I had. And at this point, the lead actor in the show, I'm like talking to him and he's like tied up a little bit. Uh-huh. Uh -oh. like, well, not like in the, a gay way. <laughs> I'm on stage, like the second night of the performance, and I completely lose my way in the middle of the story. Oh, and I'm no. just like, oh, stop. <laughs> and then the actor guy was like, wah, wah, and like threw his, threw his side up and this like told me my life. Oh. <laughs> I was like, oh, I don't know how I'm going to recover from this. I'm such a perfectionist. It was really hurtful for me, but I'm over it now. It's just so pathetic. Ah! How, like, he fed you your life. How else am I supposed to know? <laughs> like, through the <laughs> <side. laughs> You know, I would say it is a solid middle of the road five. Oh, okay. It's embarrassing, but right. we've all been there. Yes. You can, like, look back on it and, and just like, huh. huh. All right. I, um, so this one, you already know, oh, and course. you viewers already know if you watched oh. our Celebrity Encounters video. When I was a little kid, me and my brother were both very... <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> me and my brother were both very uh, into young kids on Broadway. We looked up to them and, mm. and we just loved it. And there was this one family of child actors named the Bowens. And they were all <laughs> on Broadway. We were, we were just like obsessed with this family because we really wanted to be them. Mm. And so... Two of them were in the national tour of The Sound of Music. And so me and my brother saw them. And as a joke, me and my brother made <laughs> signs saying, we love the Bowens, with like their pictures, and they were all colored in. Throughout the show, we were sitting like fifth row. So we literally just held the signs up like this. You are so <laughs> creepy. Like this is incredible. Like the more detail and we were I get kids, it, it's we were so kids. creepy. We were kids. And after the show, we went to the stage door and held up the signs. So then they came out and they were like looking at us like, <laughs> then all of a sudden this woman approached us and was like, I'm sorry, do we know you? And our mother being the very enthusiastic Italian New Jersey mother that she oh. is, was like, my sons love your children. Oh my God. And blah, 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 blah. And so it's a 10. <laughs> I would have been terrified if I was a Bowen. That is so embarrassing. I mean, it would be more embarrassing if we were like our age now. True, but, but like, we wouldn't do that. No now. offense, Michael, but like 14's not that. <laughs> <laughs> this is a story about my first boyfriend. Oh. Uh, so we had been dating for like several weeks. <laughs> And I had not slept over, and he had not slept over. I think I saw him in a production of something, because he was an actor. And then I was like, okay, bye, like, have a good night. <laughs> and then he, like, texted me once, like, look at home. He's like, by the way, you can, like, sleep over if you want to. And I was like, oh my god. I like, I guess I should. <laughs> it's my first time, I think, at his apartment, and he had told me about his roommates, these two girls. Uh -huh. And he's like, oh, I wanted you to meet them, but I guess they've gone to bed. Like, I guess you'll just have to meet them next time. And somehow, I don't know how this happened, my clothing that was not my underwear was all outside of his bedroom, somehow. I can imagine how it happened. Anyways, I woke up the next day and was like, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get dressed and like go back down and go. And so I leave his room and the two girls are just sitting right at the kitchen table and I look like, like a prostitute. <laughs> Not like, they didn't know who I was. Did they know you existed? I don't know. I remember walking to that bathroom with my clothes and like, I didn't speak and they didn't speak. And it was just like, this is bad. <laughs> the fact that they like met you later yes. and you officially became his boyfriend, yes. like that knocks that the embarrassment level down. Right. I would say that's like a six, All right. almost a seven. <laughs> okay, so uh, I was called into audition for a production of Chicago at the Hollywood Bowl for okay. the role of Mary Sunshine. The role has to sing this one song. It goes very, very high. You have to sing a woman's high C. The production was directed by Brooke Shields. And, oh. and so I, 
was practicing the song, and I just practiced the song in like little bits. Like I practiced the first chunk, and then the second chunk, right. and then the third chunk, and then the fourth chunk. But I never practiced no, the whole no. song together. I go to the audition expecting it to just be the musical director and like the casting director. Yeah. I walk in, and Brooke Shields <laughs> is sitting in the room. Of course, yeah. The first part of the song is where the high C comes. I hit the high C with full gusto. I was the only one who I heard through the wall That's hitting awesome. the high C, and so I was like, yes! Here we I go! Got this. I'm killing it in front of Brooke Shields. <laughs> so halfway through the song, my voice just collapses. Oh, no. I can't make a sound. So I'm literally singing the rest of the song like, <sighs> <laughs> oh no! But oh, hey, I hit that high you C. You got the high C. I hit the high C. And you know what? Since you hit the high C, I'll give you a C. Yeah! So, the first boy I ever kissed, and we uh, had two dates. We bonded on things like Nick Jonas being the hottest Jonas brother, and that the Olympics are horrible. <laughs> and so I was like, oh my god, we're gonna get married. Oh, yeah, that's great. <laughs> At some point, I suppose, had mentioned about Mariah and how much I loved her. Yeah. And he was like, oh, you should send me some songs of hers that I should listen to because I don't know her music very well. If you can see the length of this, I don't know if you can really see it on the phone. All the blue is me. Here is your intro to Mariah, of course, aka Mariah 101. <laughs> First off, I'm going to start with you uh, quite a few songs, some of which you should listen to via YouTube or download before I see you next. <laughs> so, <laughs> this is like, oh <laughs> I've separated the songs into two lists, classics and personal faves. <laughs> so when I go list all the classics with the description, list all the personal faves with description, and then end with, okay, I realize that this is a lot to listen to, so you can pick uh, from the descriptions which ones you think would be up your alley. I understand that this may be overwhelming, but if we're going to make a fan out of you, I think it's best that you dive right in. You have 20 years of perfection to catch up on, so get to it! P.S. I swear I'm not insane. <laughs> You know what? Yes. You gotta spread the gospel. Oh my gosh! You oh, to. Thank you! It's not that embarrassing because you know what? He needed to learn. He did! He needed to he learn! Needed to learn. <laughs> so my brother and I, when we were very young, we were very into the group, the Broadway Kids. Oh gosh. <laughs> and a bunch of kids that were on Broadway, they had an off-Broadway show. these children? I hated children who did I mean, So we would see their show off-Broadway and it was usually for them. Um, but there was uh, one uh, performer in it. She was my favorite in the show. And they were like, Matthew, why is she your favorite? Why is she your favorite? And they were like, oh, it's because you have a crush on her, right? So me being like, you know, a little boy was just like, yeah, I have a crush on her. We go and see the show again. The same girl is in the show. And so there were, after the show, you could go and get the kids autographs. We go and like get her autograph and my mom grabs her and took her head and whispered in her ear, you are my son's idol. Wow. <laughs> and, and, so, and so then my mom like walked away and was like, this is Matthew. And she was just like, oh, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> I auditioned for a production of The Sound of Music at my community theater. I was called back because naturally I'm amazing. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Guess who else was called back to play my sister? Oh my god. That girl. girl. It worked out okay. Yeah. I'll give you a five. a five. It worked out okay. The moment that your mother leaned in and said that, it was like a seven <laughs> or eight. <laughs> okay. So, in also 10th grade, 10th grade was an embarrassing time for me. 10th oh, grade sucked. That was hard. A lot of people took PE over the summer because you could just take it all at once and you didn't have to split up your day. Uh, we were learning about body types and like how it's like ectomorph and mesomorph and whatever. I think it's mesomorph? Whichever is like the big, broad body type. What's the body type we were talking about? Like, for, like me, I'm a mesomorph. Of course, <laughs> yeah, mesomorph mask. Yeah. <laughs> my uh, older brother went to school too, he's two years older than me, and then my dad, so people knew them. And my dad and older brother are like, like t taller than me and like broader than I am. And like, so I guess- I'm Straighter than you. That's neither here nor there. <laughs> but they, um, the teacher, I guess through all of her gym classes, had been using my dad and my brother as examples of how body types are hereditary. Huh. And didn't take into account that I was in the class, and so she just went around her lecture and she's like, so, raise your hand if you know Daniel Palmer. And I'm like, you mean my, like, oh, and I was like, okay. That's awkward. It was so awkward. Look, hello. And then it's like, well, raise your hand if you've seen Daniel Palmer's dad. I'm like, okay, bitch, what the fuck are we talking about? <laughs> this is a good example that you can see that body types are hereditary, and they come from your parents, and that's the body type you get. And, like, that's where it comes from. I was like, okay, that was weird and a very weird example. Yeah. But I guess we're moving on. And this girl in my class, whose name I won't mention, but you know who you are. She raises her hand, and she goes, well, what happened to Matt? <laughs> and the teacher goes, Oh, well, Matt got his mother's friend. 
that just like, does no one see that I am here? I'm physically present for this discussion. <laughs> the teacher, ah! <laughs> that teacher gave you a. <laughs> All right. Who is that teacher? She's got and that girl. Oh. So I went to college for drama for acting. Mm -hmm. In acting class one day, I was doing a scene with a girl. Okay. It was a scene where we were like about to have sex and so I was in my underwear. I, being a not very hip kid, okay. was still wearing boxers. Oh my. <laughs> I did not know that our scene had to go up that day. And all of a sudden my scene partner was like, our scene is going up, our scene is going up. And I was like, oh god, I'm wearing like boxers. Because like for the scene, like I would wear my dance belt under the boxers. In the scene, she like she had to like tie me up and like sit on me and like it was like a very like funny scene. Okay. We get through the scene and the scene is it was really good. Like I was really proud of my work on the scene. Probably like two days later, I was talking to my roommate at the time, and I was like, oh god, like I hope I don't flash anyone ever during that scene. And he just went, <laughs> and he was just like, do you not know? Oh my god! <laughs> Apparently, while she was sitting on me, she made my boxers ride up. These are my legs. Oh no. And apparently oh, people no. just saw like my penis resting on my leg. Did you not see it on their faces? No, oh, I was invested. Oh in my scene. god. I have my BFF. It's a seven. It's a seven. <laughs> it's a seven. Yeah, like it it's is... embarrassing, but it's not the most embarrassing. And like And my penis is great, so okay. Things I never need to hear. <laughs> so this so is my most embarrassing story. Like, I could forget all of these other stories. Uh -huh. On my deathbed, I will remember this. Okay. In seventh grade, mm -hmm. for some reason, our English classes were separate. My boy and girl. My girl. It was very strange. Why? I don't know why. So I'm in a class with a bunch of guys in seventh grade. I'm like, oh, this is great. <laughs> but our teacher has this brilliant idea on like a fun Friday or something. And she's like, I think I'm going to let us all give each other nicknames. It's like, are you crazy? This is what you want to do with a class of seventh grade boys. She has come up with two possible nicknames and then the student is supposed to decide which one they are. She's put up my two options and they are Heartbreaker or Butterfly. <laughs> and like, okay, I obviously choose Heartbreaker. This is the obvious choice. <laughs> I am a Heartbreaker, everyone knows that. Oh, but there's this guy in my class oh, who's no. like, kind of like the class clown. And he's like, we could just call him Rainbow. <gasps> Which was Mariah's album at the time. <laughs> I was like, this is not good. I'm developing gay and man. I'm being bullied. I'm being tortured. I felt like Kurt and Glee. It was very upsetting. It kind of had died down at a certain point. But then, oh. she had like a younger brother who was like maybe like a senior in high school at the time. And he was like very cool and like like kind of like hot in a way that isn't hot now. He had like a kind of Eminem look about him. Ooh, it, yeah. Which of course you would be into, but I of course have glassed up and would never go for that now. <laughs> so he comes in and he's like, okay, I, sorry, I just have, have one question. Who's Rainbow? <sighs> so I have to be like, Ah! Luckily, Mariah's Rainbow included a song called Can't Take That Away, which was very inspirational for me at the time. And honestly, I was class person. I was very well liked. It wasn't like I was a nerd or a loser or anything. I'm basing it at the time it happened. Yes. How embarrassing it was. So it's a nine. <laughs> A little while ago, I was writing a screenplay. I really wanted to get it done, really wanted to get it done, so I set myself a deadline, and I had to get it done by this date, because if I don't set a deadline, it's just, I'm screwed. The couple days leading up to the deadline, I was really sick, like, in the bowel section. I was like, no, I will get this done, I will get this done, I don't care, I will fight through it. I'm a fighter, I'm like Christina. <laughs> So I go to a coffee shop, and I sit down and write. Right when I sit down, I feel it, and I'm just like, oh, shit, literally, shit. But I'm just like, I just got here, and I need to finish this. If I go home now, it'll be a waste. So I decide to take my computer and go into the bathroom. I go into the bathroom, and I can't find the light switch. <laughs> and it's pitch black in this bathroom. Mm -hmm. I'm crawling all over the walls like I'm Helen Keller, like trying to find this light switch and I cannot find it and my buttholes have oh, to explode And so I'm just like, it's fine, I will poop in the dark, drop my pants, took an explosive dookie. While I'm cleaning up, I gotta really make sure I'm thoroughly clean. This is revolting. So, <laughs> I like probably tried cleaning myself for like 20 minutes. I walk out of the bathroom, then I sit back down, open up my laptop, about 10 minutes later, a guy who works at the coffee shop walks into the bathroom and then immediately runs out, <laughs> comes back with gloves, <laughs> a mop, and like a toilet bowl cleaner, Man, and disinfectant. I don't know! 
and I just run out of the oh, shop. Oh, I'm sure. Like, because it's just like, I don't think I need that oh, much. Oh, God. I was just like so nervous you shit on yourself. No, 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 <laughs> I was so I was nervous. nervous. No, 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 no. It's an eight. <laughs> <laughs> I never want to hear that story again. All right. Drum roll. Whose life's more embarrassing? I have a score. Yeah. Total of 36. All right. Matt Palmer has a score of 30. Oh. oh. That was closer than I thought it was. Yeah. That's all right. Yeah. My life's more embarrassing. There you go. But you know what? You're sitting here with me. That's so. true. We're both embarrassments together. <laughs> we hope you still love us. Exactly. Yeah, we, I still love you. Well, you're OK. <laughs> Tell us your most embarrassing story. Which of our stories do you think is the most embarrassing? Yeah. yeah. Let us know in the comments. Yeah. And follow us on Twitter. At It's Matt Steele. And It's Matt Palmer. And subscribe to us. Yes. Like us. Yes. And we'll see you next week with a brand new two game Woohoo! Bye, y'all. Bye.